So this is kind of awkward, um, given everything that Paul and his name has said and <laughs> what Angel did for us, but um, <laughs> this brings to the end uh, an elaborate plot to get all of our friends to move to Sydney. <laughs> there is no wedding. Uh, your flight home has been cancelled and uh, you've all been put on the no-fly list. <laughs> And we're moving to France. <laughs> uh, but no, we are. Um, I decided to go the old-fashioned paper route. <laughs> Dot points, don't worry. <laughs> um, but yes, there are a few things I'd like to say. Um, so, I'm a little bit embarrassed about this all being about us. Um, but <laughs> no one believes that at all. Not for a minute. I'm sorry, I just have to... Who else should it be about? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but I, I do want to take a moment to, to celebrate the relationships that make life worthwhile. Um, I'm so, so very happy to be surrounded by so many people who have made my life worthwhile. But so many of you have travelled to be with us today um, at last minute notice at what was going to be a British wedding and is now a New Zealand wedding. <laughs> um, people with who I share some of the most beautiful memories, uh, who have been there in the hardest times, but also some of the best times of my life. Um, people who I've grown with. For me, this is an opportunity to celebrate all of you, as well as it is a real opportunity to celebrate our relationship and to celebrate everything that we have shared. But also to celebrate one person in particular. Now, I'm not a simple person, as my brother knows. Um, and I don't tend to surround myself with simple people. I tend to surround myself with challenging people, passionate people, insightful people, complex people. Uh, each of you adds something different and something beautiful to my life. Good people and important people and people who are important to me. And I knew I was onto something when these people made room for you in their lives. Many of them fell in love with you too, and sometimes I wonder if they're lucky more. <laughs> well, he likes you more than me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He's split yeah. up. He gets the house. <laughs> um, look, there was no one moment when I realised that I was in love with you. But many, many moments. Um, one in particular comes to mind. So, a number of people here know me from the time when I was... Um, the president of the Edith Cain University Student <laughs> <laughs> It was a good time. Um, we did some good things. Um, and it was an organisation that some of these people here with me today rebuilt with me. It was an organisation that had nearly been closed and we rebuilt it together. We reinvigorated it and we made it something that was important to the students who were represented again. And that meant a lot to us. We were just students, but we were doing something that really meant a lot to us, and it was something that was doing a lot for other people, and we worked hard. And it was an organisation that Paul rebuilt before me. Um, now, I was dealing with a fuckwit, uh, <laughs> who was undermining everything that we had achieved together. Um, he was sowing conflict among the people that were my friends and my team members. And he was sowing distrust and turning people upon each other. Um, and I was, in one of those few times in my life, immobilised. Immobilised by anger that what we had built was being pulled apart and being undermined by this shithead. Uh, um, but you were there. And you understood what I was going through. And you listened, you guided me. You were supportive and you were perceptive. Um, and he gave me the best Valentine's gift that I've ever had. Um, he wrote a letter. And it wasn't for me. <laughs> it was for me to send to, to my team members and to the people that I'd worked with. Um, to the people who I was leaving behind as I was finishing up as I was guild president and this was all happening. Um, and this, this email that he wrote from, for me to send to them, as if it were my own words. I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, 
was so well crafted, so well thought out, it diffused the whole situation, it diffused this potential bomb which would have blown up everything that we had worked so hard for. It reminded people who they were, what they built, what they were there to achieve. With one letter, he changed people who he'd never met. And the next day I walked into a different team of people than the people I was working with the day before. That's when I knew how powerful you were. <laughs> so when I knew that I loved you. There was also the day that he turned up shirtless on the front doorstep with a six pack of beer. <laughs> 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 then too, I knew I loved you. That's my choice. He says you're not a simple man. Yeah. Look, I wish everybody could see the person that I see. I wish that you could sometimes. <clears throat> you write stories that make the world more interesting to look at. You craft stories that change the way that people see themselves. It's why you're such a good organiser. It's why you'll be a good communicator, whether it's in the fiction in the books that you write, or whether it's in campaigns that you organise in the future. I wish more people could see you smile. Rarely have I felt such pleasure as I have watching you be happy. I like who I am with you. It is so natural, so unbelievably, unethically natural to feel safe and comfortable when I'm with you. During the hardest times when you're just so supportively, supportively, dependently there. Whether it's flying from Canberra because my mother's just died, without a thought, without a, even a question. Or whether it's just being at the end of the phone when I'm going through other hardship. From the other side of the country, you've made me feel safe and secure sometimes without actually being there. At the other end of the phone, you've helped me stay strong. I'm so comfortable being free and my honest self with you without a thought. And that's just, it blows me away sometimes. How natural I am around you. I never really got into the idea of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I don't think that those in a codependent romantic relationship deserve a higher status than those who are living independently. <laughs> um, and I know friends with loving relationships that are every bit as worthy of celebration. Relationships I have with people who are in this room, which are just every bit as worthy of celebrating. But as we stand on the brink of possibly the craziest adventure of my life, <laughs> marriage in France and all this shit that's about to happen. <laughs> um, I know that I want to marry you. I know I want to celebrate this, what we have, in front of our family and our friends. And don't marry me. I want everyone to see and know the amazing person that you are. To celebrate everything that you've been to, to many people in this room. Everything you are and everything that you will be to me in the future. I only get one shot of my life and I want to give it everything I've got. So with no net, only little money, no guarantee that any of this will work, <laughs> um, I know that I'm safe here with you. I'm strong here with you. I know I'm in love with you. So, Geronimo. <laughs> <laughs>